Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting functional equation. So we are given f of f of f of x equals 5, and f is defined as follows. If you have an even number, you're going to divide by 2. If you have an odd number, you're going to add 1, which is going to make it even. And this function is defined on the set of integers. And let's see what happens. So first of all, if you take a look at it, like we, we take at x value, we apply f once. Do we know what x is? Is it even or odd? We don't. So we kind of have to go backwards. But notice that if you apply f inverse on the left three times, f is going to cancel out. So that kind of tells us that x can be written as f inverse of f inverse of f inverse of 5. Okay? Now, so that, that means we need to go backwards. So how do we do that? Let's start with, so can we apply f inverse three times on the left? We can, but what is f inverse? So here's how we're going to break it down. For x plus 1, we kind of have to invert the idea, right? It is going to be x minus 1. So f adds 1, and then f inverse is going to subtract 1. For x over 2, it is going to be 2 times x. So you just have to reverse the process. So we're going to either subtract 1 or double the number. So here's what we're going to do. Start with 5 and go backwards. That's the idea. Okay? So we're going to make it a tree. So let's start at, with 5 here. Now if you subtract 1, remember we have two things. You're going to subtract 1 or double. If you subtract 1 from 5, you're going to get 4. But remember the definition of f. This way is f, by the way, and this way is f inverse. Make sense? Okay. So, we, this doesn't make sense because if you have an even number like 4, when you apply f to 4, you're not going to add 1 because it's not an odd number. Therefore, uh, we're not going to do this, so 4 is not a valid answer. In other words, don't subtract 1 if you have an odd number, just double, all right? Since five is odd, we're just gonna double it, giving us 10, great. Now 10 is an even number, so we can subtract one from it, which is fine, and you can always check going back and forth. If you subtract one, you're gonna get nine. Now think about the other direction, f. If you have nine, f of nine is gonna be 10 because you're supposed to add one to an odd number, so this is valid, right? Or you're going to double, which is going to give you 20. That's also fine, because if you cut 20 in half, you're going to get 10. Make sense? So here's the rule then. If you have an odd number, just double it. If you have an even number, double it and also subtract 1 to get the previous numbers. So it's kind of like a branching off in different directions. 9 is odd, just like 5. So we're just going to double it. We're not going to add 1 to it. So it's going to be 18. 20 is even, so we can do both, subtract 1 and double, and that's going to give us 40. Now remember, we were supposed to go three steps backwards, right? So let's take a look. This is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. So 40 was actually obtained by applying f inverse three times, and the same thing goes for 18, and the same thing goes for 19, which means... Here's the solutions. X is an element of the following set, 18, 19, 40. In other words, we have three solutions. Now, here's an interesting follow-up question. What happens if they gave us a question like f of f of f of f of f of x equals 5? So if you apply f five times to x and you get 5, how many solutions are there going to be? So far, we have three solutions. If you went two steps, that would be two, and so on and so forth. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.